Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there. Thanks for joining. I uh, hope you guys are having a great start to your weekend. Got you a big update tonight talking about the severe weather potential for tomorrow for portions of Missouri through Arkansas all the way down to Louisiana, portions of the Deep South. We certainly need to talk about this as, you know, it hasn't technically increased from one category to another, but the enhanced risk has actually grown from north to south or south to north and we need to talk about that there is a significant chance for a large hail damaging winds and then there is a tornado threat but i'm not expecting this to be a big tornado uh, type of situation but there is a chance it could increase as of right now just that five percent risk of a uh, tornado within 25 miles in any given location that it could increase that but we'll talk all about all that in this video we'll get detailed with you guys try to mention the smaller towns and communities outside the bigger cities that we all kind of know about in each individual state and we'll try to get detailed with you guys and then we'll do it again tomorrow morning and then we'll see how it plays out so with that being said if you guys have not subscribed certainly consider doing that like the video if you like it appreciate the ongoing support it means the means the world especially in these slower times I always certainly want to throw that in there uh, just to let you guys know how much I appreciate y'all and if you guys got anything that I can pray about or pray over as always please put that in the comments below it gives me an opportunity to pray over it and it gives others an opportunity to do so too so let's get rolling water vapor loop here's what's left over of the swirl it's still swirling around out there that non-tropical low I made a joke on Twitter last night um, saying there was a, it, we have a category two hurricane over Mississippi, uh, because of, uh, that crazy, uh, satellite view that we were checking out last night, literally looked like a hurricane over Mississippi. And it was, ah, just, it blew my mind how many people actually, um, believe that there was a category two hurricane over Mississippi, but not going to get into that. Uh, for people who follow me on Twitter, social media, I am a very sarcastic person, but it's all in good fun and games but of course there's always you know people who just take it a little too serious but anyways uh this gnarly looking swirl out there swirling over tennessee kentucky bringing just uh impulses of thunderstorms throughout the carolinas but hasn't been as widespread as i thought it was going to be today it really hasn't been and then we have a surface low that's beginning to kind of pop off the rockies already kind of has and the initiation of some storms in uh, kansas getting into southern areas in nebraska uh, this evening, but we're not going to really talk about that. What we are going to talk about is this pretty large enhanced risk. Now this is, you know, goes all the way uh, pretty much from Shreveport all the way up to, you know, pretty much almost Columbia, Missouri. doesn't quite include St. Louis, uh, but it includes Little Rock and all these communities and towns in this orange area. Let's get a little bit closer to this and we'll discuss some smaller towns and try to uh, you know, talk about some areas. Little Rock's obviously the big one. You got Pine Bluff, Hot Springs, Conway, um, Fort Smith. You're technically in the slight risk. Fayetteville, slight risk. Um, the the mountainous regions of northern Arkansas, the Ozarks, Mountain Home, Harrison, uh, all the way into southern Missouri, Branson, uh, Springfield. You guys are now in the enhanced risk. This goes all the way up to Jefferson City, uh, the entire Ozark Plateau, pretty much West Plains, Mountain Grove. Um, and, uh, popular bluff. It looks like you guys are right on the, the cusp of the slight and enhanced risk. Then we get down to Louisiana, uh, Shreveport. You're pretty much in the enhanced risk Monroe, Louisiana, enhanced risk, uh, Ruston, Homer, Farmerville. So, uh, some, some communities. So pretty large enhanced risk right here in the, uh, orange. I know I got some of the slight cut off down here, but we could have some severe storms, especially cranking up tomorrow morning into early tomorrow afternoon in these southern sections. And so we're going to talk about you folks too. Tornado threat with this, like I said, it's, it's not it's not high. There's just that 5% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in a given point, basically in this entire enhanced risk. But, you know, you also have the 5% risk that extends into western sections of Mississippi. It doesn't quite include um, Jackson. You guys have a 2%. The hell threat will be big tomorrow. will be elevated not only do, if you're wondering what the yellow area is, look down here. That's a 15% risk of hail pushing one inch of diameter or larger. The red area is a 30% chance of hail pushing one inch in diameter or larger. The hatched risk, you see the black outline region right here with all the checkered lines going through it. That is its own risk category. That means there's a 10% risk also called a hatched risk of significant hail which is two inch or diameter or larger so 
you know, the next thing we'll look at is wins. Well, what I think is going to end up happening is you're going to have a couple loan supercells that could potentially get going. And you're going to have some wind-driven large hail. I feel like we had a cluster of storms last spring that kind of did something like this in northern Arkansas. It was a um, very intense thunderstorm here in northern Arkansas somewhere uh, that had uh, some wind-driven large hail. And uh, it actually looked like tornado damage, but it was actually wind-driven baseball-sized hail. So this could be that kind of situation tomorrow. So take every storm serious. And if you have a way to cover up your cars in these regions, I'm telling you, do what you can. Not everybody, you know, has a garage or, or carports, but, you know, if you do, take advantage of them. Um, but this red, just a 30% risk. I will say just, but I'll say why I said that here in a second. 30% a chance of winds in this red area pushing 50 knots or higher. That's 55 to 60 miles per hour. I would not be surprised. I said this this morning. If you get a hatch region from this, which means you would have a 10% risk somewhere in this red area of winds pushing 65 knots or higher, which is around 70 to 75 miles per hour. So let's talk about how this can unfold tomorrow. Let's talk about the deep south first. Don't focus too much on Arkansas because we're going to discuss Arkansas in the next panel. So already we're waking up around 8 a.m. You already got some gulf showers and storms. They will continue to develop. It'll be a rocky uh, um, late morning, early afternoon for the Bayou, Louisiana, Baton Rouge, some storms. Watch out. Some of these could produce a quick tornado, but I do think some of these could produce some damaging winds. In fact, you know, you look at the Storm Prediction Center, I would not be surprised if they extend the slight risk all the way down into here somewhere. Just because these models are liking the idea of this cluster of storms down here. But these storms uh, start to make their way. Let's uh, check out my Google Maps down here. You no know, Gulfport, uh, Hattiesburg. Watch out for some storms early in the afternoon tomorrow. This rides the Gulf Coastline all the way into Mobile. Um, you start to get into Pensacola, I would say around 4 or 5 p.m. And, uh, you know, the storms probably won't be, <clears throat> excuse me, quite as intense a little far, further north in Mississippi and Alabama. But you could certainly see some intense storms. But, man, I'm telling you, shelf cloud watch along the entire Gulf Coastline, meaning uh, if you don't, you know what a shelf cloud is it it's basically uh, basically the the front of a, a line of storms coming and it normally is very photogenic uh, type in shelf cloud in the ocean and uh the, you you'll know exactly what you're seeing there but uh, you could certainly see you'll certainly see these storms coming along the western coastline of the of uh, the um, panhandle of Florida that's for sure and these storms will continue they'll lose some steam once you get into the evening but make it might make it all the way into the big bit big bend areas and then behind this, and like I said, don't focus too much on Arkansas. We'll talk about them in a second. Behind this, you know, you could have a cluster of intense storms that could develop around the Shreveport area and make their way through uh, northern Louisiana. And, I mean, look what time it is. You back this up one hour, and that's in central time because this is showing in eastern time. It's around 8 p.m. There's some big storms blasting through northern Louisiana. Um, and then they make their way through northern Louisiana and then knock on the door of uh, western Tennessee and then western Mississippi, I would say late evening uh, in the middle of the night tomorrow night. And I think these will begin to lose some storm, some steam. So let's talk about um, some potential wind gusts because I'm watching this line of storms down here. They could produce, you see these areas of orange and red. I mean, that's 50, 60 mile per hour wind gusts with some of these clusters of storms that the HRR model is showing. So tomorrow afternoon, watch out along, along the you know very small coastline that there is of Alabama and Mississippi into the Panhandle, Western Panhandle, Florida. These storms could produce some gusty winds, and they could produce a lot of rain. Rainfall between now and uh, 7 a.m. Sunday, one to as much as three inches of rain along the Gulf Coastline. So a lot of rain can fall also. So be aware of that. Um, but let's talk about Arkansas, surrounding regions. Not a whole lot going on in the morning. Maybe some showers and storms around southeast Missouri. But then as we get into, you know, this point we're at 2, 3, 4 p.m., bang. Around 4 p.m., nasty storm shows up on the HRRR model, developing over the Boston Mountains, uh, these regions right into here. Well north of Little Rock could have a big-time storm that develops here. So what I worry for is if you have any individual cells that fire up like you're showing on the HRRR model, they 
it, it, it could rotate because it's not clustered up with, it's not being bothered by any kind of other convection. It can take advantage of what atmospheric players there is on the field. And, uh, you know, they could produce some pretty large hail. So immediately a 4 p.m. storm pops up, but then immediately it turns into a more clustered mode out here. And we're really just talking about Arkansas. We'll talk about Missouri here in a second. Um, but, you know, big storms in the northern half of Arkansas, these continue. Then this storm kind of, these storms kind of reconnect or will connect right into here. So, you know, you stop at around 7 p.m., a very intense line of severe thunderstorms is possible from northern Arkansas all the way to southern Arkansas. Even some just severe storms are possible in eastern areas of Texas tomorrow evening or just after dinner time, or whenever your dinner time may be. Hot Springs, Little Rock, Pine Bluff, um, up to Jonesboro, everybody in between um, could be getting some nasty storms. It starts to enter um, eastern Arkansas and then begins to blast out of Arkansas. But I would say conditions in Arkansas go downhill mid to late afternoon, 4 or 5 p.m., and last, and it lasts probably all the way through, I don't know, maybe as late as around 11 p.m., midnight. So not a long-duration event, but these storms, like I said, they could be producing wind-driven driven large hail. Take these storms serious. I know you've been guys. You guys have been getting you being used to. Can't talk. You guys have been used to this these big time tornado threats. But this is going to be a large hail damaging wind threat. But the tornado threat could increase. And speaking of that tornado threat that I'm watching for, this is those updraft helicity swaths that we talk about, right? Um, they get pretty high in this area tomorrow. Let me make sure I'm in the right thing. I mean, yeah, I mean they 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 get pretty high tomorrow along this line of storms in Arkansas. Any, any area where you see the higher numbers or just the, the more vibrant colors, that's where it's indicating the highest chances chances for a rotating thunderstorm. So um, take this serious, um, you know, and just keep, 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 make sure you're in a way, you're, 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 you have a way to continue to get continued updates because this could, the severe weather threat could increase, I guess was what I'm saying, throughout the next, um, you know, 12 hours into tomorrow morning, okay? Um, but, you know, there is a chance that some of these are spinning. You can see highlighted areas where it's rot where it's showing rotating thunderstorms. But, um, yeah, we just need to be careful with this because you could have a tornado threat along with this. Missouri into Illinois. Morning convection flies through, and then here comes these storms. I want to watch because near the low pressure up here, uh, you're going to have what we, what we call better kinematics, meaning you have a better uh, wind pattern aloft, be a better uh, wind flow aloft to really put some directional flow to the lower levels of the atmosphere and uh, some speed shear. So you got changing of speed with height. We call that speed shear and uh, changing of direction with height. We call that directional shear. So. I want to watch some of these storms, you know, that get going. H triple R model likes a big storm getting going, um, you know, around Warrensburg, Clinton. Watch out that area. Th this storm could rotate. In fact, you know, I just saw it on the updraft felicity swap that really likes the idea of this storm rotating. And this is around 4 or 5 p.m. And then bang, big storms erupt and almost a good a good large chunk of Missouri. Watch out. You know, along uh, Interstate 40, some nasty storms could ride 40 all the way into Columbia, Missouri. And then you watch southern and then southeast Missouri along that Ozark Plateau. Poplar Bluff, these storms start to get close to your area. And then they develop into more of a segment of storms. It's around 7 p.m. And these are some pretty intense storms in northern Missouri. This is trended into, I would say, a higher severe threat for even northern Missouri. So you stop it here, it's around 7 p.m. These are some pretty intense storms for the central to eastern half of Missouri. And uh, it shows some pretty nasty storms moving through St. Louis around 8, 9 p.m. Uh, these storms begin to enter the boot hill of Missouri. Um, I would say late evening, 8, 9 p.m. Slams you guys. This begins to enter Illinois. While the western Illinois, I would say around 8 to 10 p.m. Affects Peoria. Springfield, uh, you know, even all the way up the, you know, Davenport, Iowa, and uh, might even make it all the way into Chicago. And this blasts through the entire state of Illinois throughout the late evening, overnight hours, and then we'll lose some punch. And then check out the, check out the snow behind it.
pretty pretty insane. And in fact, let's talk about the snow. But that's a severe weather threat. We'll give you another update tomorrow. But check out this little snow event. I mean, we're in mid-April. It's uh, beginning to become a lot more uh, less common. But I would say sometime after midnight tonight, I mean tomorrow night, you have some snow that breaks out over central to west central Iowa. And uh, this could overperform. Um, this could be some very heavy wet snow that falls into the wee hours of the morning in Iowa and to southern uh, Minnesota uh, early Sunday morning. And this makes it all the way into Minneapolis, even all the way into areas of western Wisconsin. Won't last long. In fact, it won't be snowing anymore by the time you wake up for most of Iowa. Still hanging on some to some moderate to heavy snow in eastern Minnesota. Uh, but this is pretty crazy considering, in fact, a lot of these areas are in the 70s, even 80s right now. But snowfall between now and the weekend, they're not saying a lot, but certain areas I really think could get two to three inches of snow here in northern Iowa, southern Missouri, and a stripe of maybe an inch or two of snow throughout Missouri in these regions right in here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, throughout Minnesota. So, hope that helps. Uh, I'll have you another update on the severe weather threat. We'll see if it increases. Hopefully, it does not. But uh, it's not a question if storms are going to form because we know the storms are going to be there. It's how intense are they going to be. So, that's all I got. God bless all y'all. Have a great Friday evening, and I'll be with you in the morning.